around the country several times on trips like that, raising money for uh, brothers that had got strong murder cases or something like that, and they needed uh, help. We raised, we raised money, and also, it was a time when I knew literally where almost every masjid in the United States was. Because I traveled to all of them, all the universities, all the, it was, it was a, a good experience. It helped us be in touch with the, the, the Muslims. And it was in a, a, a period when it was still open. It, open and friendly. And the immigrants, when they saw a Muslim from us, <gasps> I'm telling you, that joke about Al Fatiha, do you know Al Fatiha? Of course I know Al Fatiha. We play with him, just mess around, you know. Yeah, then, you know, it was, it was a wonderful period. It was a good, it was a good, healthy period. This program is not at the end of the, this is the, the height of the mixture and blending of Muslim groups and organizations. Because remember, we are Sabakun. We are uh, an African-American led Muslim group and organization. But the people who are part of this are Sabakun. Are mostly, I don't know if you've seen it, many of the pictures, but they're mostly immigrants and immigrants' children. Yeah, I saw the pictures there. Yeah, there's tons of them. I mean, there was a, a thousands. I mean, we, uh, when we would have a program like this, those auditoriums and what have you would be full. Okay. A lot of people believe that was a good point and that was a high point. That was a good point and I'll talk about that period. That period was a, a special period. But here's what Asaba Kun al Abulun was about. Uh, our concerns are presently focused on four main area, areas. Masjid, schools, businesses, and geographical integrity. So the masjid, uh, well, when we first came here, the masjid was over on 8th Street. And uh, that place was just packed with people. That's where we wrote this article from, from over there. This was, yes, 96, definitely. We was over there, and you wouldn't believe how everybody was coming out of I mean, it was unbelievable. It was really a good, uh, so anyway. So the masjid is a place for ethical training, moral training, uh, building Islamic character and what have you. And that's the purpose of the masjid. Also, it brings the Muslims together five times a day. That in itself is a very big and important thing, that five times a day you and other people like you get together. Or some make it twice a day, some make it, but you're going to have the prayer five times a day at that masjid. That is the first step of Islamic movement. Having a place that brings the people together on a regular basis. And then there you have classes. You talk about classes. It's going to take a long time to get back to classes. This is dynamite. <laughs> and as helpful as those classes was. Remember, now, don't, nobody has to get depressed because remember, the Islamic movement goes through ebbs and flows. That was an ebb at that time, and in the flow, it served its purpose at that time. Okay, then the schools. You might have heard about how good the school here was, Masjid al-Islam School. I would say it's the best. All of our children go to the. Have you heard? Of, all of our children go to the best universities in the country. 
Yeah, that's what I've heard. That's, yeah. That's, that's what I've heard as well. Yeah, that's all the kids, they, yeah, yeah. they, all our kids, and talk about D.C. I know my children, when they went to the public school, they was two years ahead at least on everything because we used that homeschooling thing when we did it. We taught it in a classroom environment. It was wonderful. I mean, our children were a minimum of two years ahead of everybody because that homeschooling program, I mean, it was questions on there for the fifth graders that uh, I had to think about. I knew them because I studied, but didn't nobody else know the answers to those questions. Right. Uh, when they asked him, no, I wouldn't think nobody knew. But our fifth graders had them, and it proves that by how they all ease into their school. When they, when we closed our school down, when those children uh, went to those outside schools in D.C., they said, we had this stuff two years ago, three years ago. They were just so far ahead, and uh, we were happy about it. But Mustard schools, so our main school was here and in, and in Oakland. I think Oakland had a bigger school. Okay, businesses. Uh, of course, uh, bookstore and all that selling. We made a lot of money by going to programs and taking books. And uh, remember at that time we had a low overhead. So we went and sold four thousand dollars worth of books. That was except for what we paid for, and we hustled books too. We, you know, if we went in a big Muslim distributing place that's distributing Qurans and everything, and we all, of course, people that are going to be our friends say, "Hey, man, a few boxes of them boys. So we use four or five boxes." Of Yusuf Ali, the green, nice. So, uh, and we give everybody a break. We sell them for eight or ten dollars at that time, and we got them free. Or we help them distribute some of the other stuff that they had free. You know, it was all kind of ways. We had a real lively. We used to go to every uh, what Isna. Ikna and all the other big groups would have their holiday extravaganzas, whatever we call them that, but you know, if this was before the internet and all of that, you know. Right. So people bought books, and they bought a lot of books. I mean, you know, they would buy a lot of books, and we would have a lot. We had, it was something unbelievable. As small as we were, we, I don't know if you remember how Alalco was. See, here's what we said. When I came here, uh, I said, what's the baddest book shop and everything in D.C.? They took me over to Alalco. I said, man, this is deep. I said, we're going to catch them. So not surpass them, which we did. Or the people didn't know we had surpassed them. traded books and we did, we had good relation. So that was the goal. Okay, when you go somewhere, who's the baddest guy in town? Well, they are. Well, we want to be at least that good. That's a good way to, uh, you know, who has the best bike, bicycle shop in town? Oh, they have it over there. Well, we're going to get equal or better than them. Success is automatic because you're going to get big as them, or better than them, you can't lose. You got something to look at. That's the way we did in DC. Now at that time with book distribution, with all those things, came programs and getting to know everybody and meeting everybody. And uh, it was a wonderful period. This period right here, 97. But we've been doing that uh, when we got here. We brought books with I'll tell you how I got to D.C. I can't. We had a program up in Canada. I took 
tons of books to the program in Canada. I think I sold $1,800 worth of books at the, at the program in Canada. That was in, in, in 89. Because I got here on June 23rd or something like that. Of 89. Then we had our, my, our June was over on 16th Street. It was closing down. And it's a long story, but we had our gym over there, we knew the owner, and we had it there for a few months, Master Taylor's farm. And we would go selling books from here. You know, they have a program. See, you look everywhere and you say, they have a program and such and such a thing. So you go over there and you set up your books. You either rent a bookstore, Right, if they doing that, if they not doing that, you just set up books anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then you got to remember, everything is almost profit except what we pay for the books. And then our hustling books on the side. See, right now if we sold four or five thousand dollars worth of books, it would be nothing. But if we sold four thousand dollars worth of books then, that was almost all profit. Except for what we paid for, we ordered the books from Pakistan, they were relatively cheap, and we ordered a lot of them, and on and on and on, India and Pakistan. And so, when we would go to these conferences, like this is a conference and everything, so we, we had all kinds of schemes, but it all worked perfectly. For instance, we would get one table like this, just one table like this. That's what we would pay for. But in our stall, we would have another one of these tables going this way. And another one of the tables going this way. And another one going that way. And we'd have a little space where you could walk in right over here. Right? So guess what? We'd have four tables. I'd bring other, table, other tables with me. And we'd have this is our front table. Another table there. You gotta imagine now how much money you're gonna make. And we got so many books from uh, so many different spots that we had friends in a lot of the book publishing places instead of another. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's one book in Arabic, uh, such and such, such, they sold it for I think $12. Or he sold it to other people for twelve dollars. I sold it on our table for eight dollars. He sold it to other distributors for twelve dollars. And one of the programs they rolled over, this is in the nineties, I'm sure. Yeah, this is in the nineties. And I know all of these, hey man, uh, how many of those you got? So I got a few. He said, I, I published that. I said, yeah, I know. He said, I sell it to dealers, book dealers like yourself, for $12. How can you sell it for $8? I said, well, don't worry about it. You want to buy something? Well, I could get up $8 all you want. <laughs> so, no, no, it's serious. They did that with many books. Oh, I don't know if you've ever seen this big encyclopedia of Islam. The big green encyclopedia. I think I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been it a came few out years. in 86. I might have seen it in a bookshop oh, a long a, time ago. It's a, a, a wonderful book. That sold over in Halako for $100. It sold in Halako for $100. Mm -hmm. Okay, I must have had a, about at least a thousand of them, something like that. So, uh, when we would go to ISNA program, see, they would give their homeboys, their homeboys, they'd had a 
Right. The table. When they open up the door, everybody run right past, run right there, and they would be sinning. When, they, when, when you start off, the books are stacked up here. And by the time we leave, and I mean, they're knocking over, and I used to tell them, y'all got to, hey man, y'all got to put some security on yourself. Because if I'm making four or five thousand dollars, they're making forty thousand, fifty. Let's go on and say it like this. They might have twenty-five tables, they're making a minimum of fifty thousand dollars. A minimum, because once you get to count the books, you can count. Stack is aside. When we come in, now it's down here. Okay, and that's all 20 tables or 25, right? right? Okay, so we got aware of, I didn't mean to go on this subject, but we got aware of where to get your table, how to, uh, okay, when they open the doors, they got you know, they say, location, location, location. Their friends are putting on a program. They know where the people are going to be. So they go and buy, they're going to have their bookstores, their friends with their books. They're going to be right, as soon as they open the doors at dinner, they're going to walk right out there. And they're going to buy tons of books. That's one of the reasons you go into the book program. Okay? Uh, when they go in for prayer, they're going to have the other homeboy, you know, right over there where everybody, they're getting all the traffic. Now us, we're over, and you got to know where you're going to be at, where the traffic is. So I would go to Isna in Indiana, I'd stop by there. So when y'all are doing the books, uh, the tables, we start, okay, we'll start today. And so you got to, here's the, the diagram. So this is the dining, this is that, 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 so we're going to come through here. Okay, this is where we want our bookstore, where the people come by. Sometimes they mess with you, and they stick you way over on the side. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So here's what we would have to do. We had incomes of books, good books, by the boxes that we could buy it from. Uh, different places. Uh, maybe some big roles worked in the book distributor. I don't know where they came from. But anyway, we would have tons of books. I would pay $25, $30 for a box of books that have 72 Bible, Quran, and science. Maybe it has 52 or 72 in there. Okay. And the big people, they have to sell that for, at that time, Ten, fifty, twelve dollars. Say, I can sell it for eight. You know, I sell it for eight. And guess what? When everybody go around and look at books, some of them are gonna come to you last or down near last. But pretty soon, uh, people are gonna have a book that they paid twelve or fifteen dollars for. And they're going to come and they're going to see it on your table for $8. All right. Yeah. So here's what you do. You know, like to do that people have sales. <laughs> no, here's all you do. You use, you have five or six books with a special price. A special price. It's a special price. And so they come and buy that book for $8, but they buy a whole other stack of books, right, mm -hmm. that you got for a nice price. Your price is always better than the other people. Right. Your price is always better than the other people. If they sell a good dose, man, they used to sell those encyclopedias for $100. $100 a piece. That time is I would start off selling them for fifty dollars, then I would cut it down to uh, forty dollars. The big shots would come over. They printed the book. How do you sell that for a? Uh,
because you know they they had it printed and that that's a thick, sturdy, good book. How do you sell that? How much you sell that for? How many you want? They got a thousand. Say yeah, I can give you a thousand. They look all under there, and I would have a thousand of those books. Those books, I said, I give them to you for twenty-five dollars a piece. That'd be twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay, that's cheaper than they got it printed for. They sell a book for hundred dollars. Right. They probably pay all oh, shipping. Minimum of forty-five or fifty dollars per book, because they send it to a dead distributor, yep. like Halako out there. They send it to him for seventy to seventy-five dollars each, and he's selling them for a hundred dollars out there. Mm -hmm. And so, now you gotta imagine Yusuf Ali, the beautiful green. No more than 10 bucks. They sell them for 15 because they buy them from certain sources. We buy them for Negroes that work in the places, which I don't know what they do, but they, we get a pretty reasonable deal. And then we had another thing. The Negroes that was getting all these books everywhere, they would have them all on the floor. Said, let me have them scraps. Say I call them scraps. And for uh, for years, I could just scrap all the books up. They just about brand new now. When I finish with them, you don't think they're new. Or I got a spot on the table. I'm going to put those books. That's Bible, Quran, and Science. All those expensive books. Shoot, I have a, a special on them. And I got them free of, hey man, I give you $10 a box for them scraps. I call them scraps, they're not scraps. Right. They're books that fell out of boxes in their little hole and they, they didn't care about them. They didn't know. The guy, I, see, I won't tell you his name, he's still over at Masjid Muhammad. And he had a friend over there, and uh, out that way he worked at a big book distributor. They load them U hauls up and they'd come to me. So I could get the green use of Ali. I'd pay two dollars each. Sure, all you got. Anything else? Then when they when I bought them out, I said, man, you let me get them scraps. So one day 